So, for this week's Twitter question, I had asked you guys, what is the best movie prequel? And some of you guys actually answered with the correct answer. Others gave pretty good answers, but, you know, Godfather Part 2, it's the winner. Kubrick, on his deathbed, said it was the best. But obviously, I chose this question because it is the solo premiere week, and that is a prequel. You know, a lot of people did put Star Wars as one of their tops for when it comes to prequels. Some uh, kind of got a little bit confused when it comes to prequels. So, in my opinion, and I'm sure it could vary for a bunch of people, a prequel needs to be a sequel, right? It cannot be the establishing story. So, it cannot be Batman Begins, even though that's a great movie. It can't be anything that's pretty much rebooting it, because I know some people did pick Casino Royale. It has to be something that's continuing the story but like kind of in reverse like it's adding to it through a prequel so i have a bunch of your guys submissions and i'm just going to go through them starting with alien covenant say what you want i like it a lot of people did put um a bunch of alien movies a lot of people put prometheus i'm not the biggest fan of alien covenant i still can't get over this scene i'll do the fingering but I did like Prometheus for what it was trying to set up. It didn't answer a lot of questions, which again, if I have a criteria for what a prequel should be, it needs to not only work with what has been established, right? So you can't just like change up what the world is already for like aliens, for example, but you also kind of need an impact for it. And Prometheus, I thought kind of was almost going to do that. It was going to add an element of how the whole franchise started, the beings and all that, and it kind of does. It just leaves you with way more questions than answers. Fernando says, hard to say. Two examples I can think of are Animal Creation for being a gigantic improvement over the first one, which that's exactly what a prequel should be. Even if it's for, for a really bad franchise, if your prequel can do something good, and the director for Animal Creation, that man knows what he's doing. Uh, then that's exactly what a prequel should be. Another one that a bunch of you guys kept putting was Planet of the Apes, which for me, that's in my top five. I think that Dawn is the best out of the trilogy, but the beauty of it is that it not only adds to the original franchise, but the second one in particular, it, it does what a prequel should do, and, and, and especially a franchise, and that's that the second one really elevates not only the first, but a bunch of the actions that happen in the third when you see the war that's happening that isn't really a war physically with the apes, but a war internally with your boy Caesar. That franchise really knew how to build upon the character of Caesar and the decisions that he had to make, the sacrifices that he made, that whole struggle with Koba and seeing how he still plays a factor in the third movie. I think it, it, it's really geniusly made, uh, as opposed to the Cloverfield paradox. Ricky, does Collateral count as a prequel to Transporter? Cause that. Yo, uh, I don't know if it does, but if you have not seen Collateral, highly recommend Collateral. I'm really fond of Fantastic Beasts. It's an unusual blockbuster screenplay that has some nice themes and emotion, and I give a lot of credit for that. Uh, I've never seen a Harry Potter movie. Final Destination 5, because it was secretly a prequel the whole time. If you have not seen Final Destination 5, I do not consider this a spoiler because you probably were never going to watch it. Let this be the incentive for you to go and watch it, but you need to watch at least the first one. I remember watching this, and like, it was one of the things that literally blew my mind because this isn't a series where you expect a twist like that, something that actually comes, you know, back in and of itself. And the fact that it actually holds up when you watch it again, so I'm not saying it's like the greatest of movies, but everything that they were leading up for the ending actually works. All of the Hobbit movies, if you cut them together into one film, I, I want to agree, right? I don't have a problem with the Hobbit movies other than the fact they drag and the character development isn't that good and really just felt like they were doing it for money. Lindsay Ellis has a really great video on it. You probably have seen it, but if not, I highly recommend to go check it out. There is another Lord of the Rings prequel thing that's happening that, that I think Amazon is doing. I covered it on the Intercut podcast. You could definitely go check out right here. It's just, again, if you're going to tell a story, make that story worth telling. Don't add upon it just because, you know, it's a small book, but you need to make three movies out of it. Tell the story and make the story the best it could possibly be. A lot of people really do like The Hobbits. I just wish it was shorter. Like The Hobbit. I like Insidious The Last Key. I don't know, more screen time with Elise is good. It also left room for spinoffs. With her granddaughter, which 1000%, that's the one thing I will give the movie, uh, is that it's, it's the girl from... Zack Stone is gonna be famous. Another recommendation, which I highly have. 
that they're trying to kind of expand on the fact that Elise is getting too old to be doing the actresses so they won't be able to continue the franchise with her. So they might be continuing it with her granddaughter who actually has the same powers that she has. So for that, you have an opportunity to not only create a better... I guess storyline going forward, but something that can actually es expand upon the all of the creatures and demons that you have in this movie. Jeepers creep, no. A couple of quick ones here is The Lion King 1 and a half, which without a doubt, Mallrats is a prequel to Clerks. Memento, does Memento count as a prequel to itself? No, but again, I would recommend Memento if you haven't seen it. Prayers for AJ for recommending Minions. Monsters University. I'm so glad that a lot of people actually do like Monsters University. I know that it's not necessarily hated. Well, some people do hate it. Some people really look at it, put it down. I enjoyed the movie for what it was. Does it contradict some things that were in Monsters, Inc.? Is it as good as Monsters, Inc.? Absolutely not, but... It's not bad. Ouija Origin of Evil has no right to be even remotely good, and yet it was. I'm gonna take a recommendation. I ain't watching no Ouija movies. A lot of you recommended uh, Veronica for an LME video. I don't mess with that Ouija stuff, but hey, if you say so. Of course, there was a lot of Star Wars ones, specifically for Revenge of the Sith, which a lot of people do like, but I will say, I've said this before, I'll probably continue saying it. I'm not the biggest fan of Rogue One, but when it comes to that third act and seeing how, again, just like the Dawn movies and, and just like the Godfather and the way that interweaves itself to be able to tell and further the story for the Corleone family, this one had a buildup that adds to episode four. So when you get to episode four, you're like, yo, a lot of people died to get here. A lot of the best ones have already been mentioned, but my dark horse pick is Scorpion King. Fun sword and Sando adventure flick, but it's the feature debut of Dwayne The Rock Johnson as a leading man. That's true. Uh, I will say this, and I have this one over here. One of the first things I ever got from this channel was this Scorpion Co Scorpion King Ford Quest for Power thing. Like they had told me, "Hey, we see you have a channel and you review movies. Would you like Would you like this film?" And uh, they sent it to me. I've never seen it. I don't plan to, but if you're a fan of Scorpion King, let me know down below, and I'll probably send this to you. Super Eight is a prequel to Cloverfield. Facts. Tarzan Two. I Morgan. Morgan? Gotta go with Temple of Doom. Probably the best part of Temple of Doom, every time someone brings up this movie, for those of you who don't know, is the fact that this movie literally created the PG-13 rating system. Like, it, it pioneered it because families were seeing it as too violent to be a PG movie, but it wasn't exactly rated R, so they're like... Well, I mean, Steven Spielberg is already creating cinematic masterpiece. Why not create a, create a new cinema rating? It's not even a competition. The good, the bad, and the ugly. It, it's an unofficial prequel, but for me, this is in my top five. If you go check out my letterbox, if you've heard me mention it before, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly is one of my favorite films of all time. One of the first genres that I got into when I was getting into movies was the Western genre, and uh, this one being the unofficial prequel to A Fistful of Dollars for a, a few dollars more. I love it. I adore it. Countless people have named the obvious, but I personally thought The Thing was a pretty good prequel to the original The Thing. I agree. Two things for it. One, when you watch them back to back or however you want to view it, it actually adds to the movies, depending on how you view it. There are, there are things that are interconnected, which is what a good prequel should do. Also, it stars Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Tokyo Drift completely slipped my mind since the sequels finally passed it in the timeline. Uh, I always forget that that's a prequel. And it's interesting how, how the Fast and Furious timeline is like all over the place. It doesn't go like sequel, sequel, prequel. It is literally all interwoven. I'll give it that it has this scene that I always think about when I'm driving. What the? Police cars are the only factory to can do better than 180K. They can't catch you. So they don't even try. I guarantee you that's not the case in Chicago. I gotta show some love for my man David Lynch with Fire Walk With Me, the prequel film to Twin Peaks TV series. I, I'm still finishing season two of Twin Peaks. I know it's... I know. I'm finishing it up and then I'm going to be watching that and then I don't know, getting a Showtime subscription or whatever, wherever they have the new one on. But I feel like this is the one prequel where it's not that it's going to fail the story. It's just going to make the story way more confusing than it already is. Finally, there was everybody who said X-Men First Class. Not only does it do a fantastic job setting up the tone for its own trilogy, but it also stands on its own as a good X-Men film, separate from the franchise. J-Law is an amazing mystique, but James McAvoy is the best part as Professor X. I love First Class. I like Days of Future Past. What I hate, <laughs> what I hate is the fact that none of those even matter anymore because they've ruined them. And I think that's where the beauty of a, a prequel comes in because it not only allows you to go back and expand on a story, you know, be able to add some little details here and there. In the case of X-Men, you're able to go back and literally restart everything. 
Again, sometimes fail with it, but that's the beauty of it. But to me, you know, when it comes to prequels, it, it just needs three things. One, make it necessary. Don't just cover a character just because you know this is a franchise that needs to be milked or you still need the rights for it. Two, make it a story that's interesting. I don't care if you create a whole other franchise off the prequels. As long as there's something to tell, tell it. And three, make sure that it adds to the future. Because the one thing about prequels, and especially with everyone being riled up with nostalgia, is that a lot of people get very comfortable and love the fact that we're just not changing something, right? But you gotta remember, the reason why you're getting that prequel, the reason it was greenlit to begin with, the reason why we're expanding on that story, is because of an already established property that we like. So for the people who are very comfortable and just love the fact of treading on old ground because it feels safe, it's okay to move on. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I love prequels just as much as everybody else, but I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts down below. Any prequels that were mentioned, let me know down below in the comment section. Big shout out to the patrons who always help out on a monthly basis. Got big things that are coming up. We're, we're very close to reaching a goal, and I'm gonna be introducing or bringing back Cineclash for those of you who remember, so that's something really excited. Uh, really exciting that I'm looking forward to, to bringing up. But also, big shout out to Marcus Theaters, as I mentioned every Friday on the Friday show. Definitely click on the link down below in the description if you are in the Chicagoland area and you want free tickets for Solo this weekend. If you're watching this in the future, still go click the link. We have free giveaways every weekend that I I've been working with them to get you guys the movie lovers access to some movies. So go check that out. Go like Marcus Theaters on Facebook or Twitter or Club Penguin, whatever they have. Definitely let me know your thoughts on this video or anything else down below in the comment section. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.